Hello friends, today's a very exciting day for Tritea. Let's head over to the mailbox and pick up a very special package that's waiting for us. One down, one to go. I am very, very excited to announce that Tritea and myself are now ambassadors for Dakota Lithium Batteries. Dakota Lithium has supplied us with everything we need to upgrade Tritea's uh, battery system to lithium, and it's gonna be a massive game changer. I'll be doing a number of install videos that show this whole process. Um, everything from replacing the AGM battery bank with the lithium battery bank to converting the entire galley to electric. And I'm very, very excited about the possibility of what we'll be able to achieve now. So let's first talk about what led to me wanting to change Tritea's batteries to lithium. And it all boils down to one thing. And that's the fact that I need to convert my galley from denatured alcohol to either propane or electric. Now, Tritea has always had an alcohol stove. When I bought her, she had a built-in one that was original to the boat. I replaced that with the gimbal stove um, that you've seen in the videos, which was also denatured alcohol. I've, I've always been fine with using that as a cooking fuel, never had an issue until January of 2019 when California banned denatured alcohol, which is completely insane. So suddenly overnight, you couldn't get it anymore. And it got, so desperate, I mean, I was able to order some on Amazon for a bit and then they stopped shipping it into California. I even had friends bring me in five gallons at a time from Arizona. So that became a huge headache in California, which was absurd because you could just buy it at any hardware store in any adjacent state. So the more I looked into that, I discovered that in the South Pacific, you can't buy denatured alcohol for cooking at all because people will drink it or turn it, use it for moonshine. And if you drink denatured alcohol, it leads to blindness. So <clears throat> they just don't sell it in the South Pacific. So landing here in Hawaii, I realized, well, my next destination is the South Pacific, so I have to do something about my galley. So there's two options, really, um, for what I want to do. I either was going to convert to propane, which I had, did not want to do, um, or electric. Now, the reason I didn't install propane in the first place is I don't want to bomb on the boat. Um, so I'm not into the fact that it can blow your boat up. And I've seen videos where it has blown up boats. I know it's not that common, but it is a possibility. And the second thing was seeing and reading about all the nightmares of cruisers in different countries trying to get the right adapter because the propane fittings are not standardized around the world. So like each new place you go, you have to figure out if you have the right adapter or you can find one and then finding propane. Coupled with that, during the pandemic, there was just no propane to be had. So like, you know, just like so many other things that happened, suddenly there's no propane. So all of those factors, I was like, I really do not want to convert to propane. Not to mention Tritea is so small. She's a 30 foot boat. I don't have a lot of space. So I don't have a great spot to build like a proper propane canister locker um, on the aft end of the boat. I mean, you could keep it on deck, but then it's in the weather and all that stuff. So there were a lot of negatives for me when it comes to propane. Um, and uh, so then I was like, okay, well, I remembered in 2018 when SV Delos converted to lithium and they went all electric on their cooking. <clears throat> now, I remember watching that video in 2018 and being like, are you guys crazy? Because I was completely misinformed about the chemistry of new lithium batteries. And because all I knew about lithium batteries was lithium ion, which have in the past, you know, had problems with catching on fire and exploding. And it's, it's uncommon that that happens with those batteries, but when it does happen, it is catastrophic. 
So when I was seeing them stack up all these, you know, in my mind was like a bomb under their bed. And then I was like, that is co totally insane. It was just like me being ignorant to the chemistry of like safe lithium batteries, which is lithium iron phosphate, which is what Decode is made of and 100% safe. So I watched them do that. And then as I was here looking into, you know, electric galleys, I watched their SV Delos's one year later to see what they said about their induction cooktop range and their toaster oven setup. And um, the video, they were like, yeah, we love it. It's great, you know? And they were saying, they were talking about all the pluses and they said the only negative that really they had to talk about was that they didn't have the right kind of pots at first. And then once you get the pots, you have to have pots that are magnetic because induction cooktops create heat through like magnetic um, wizardry. <laughs> And um, so they said once they got the right pots, then it was like they loved it. Um, so I was like, okay, well, that's like a cool option because if you can get lithium, you have solar, and then you have kind of unlimited cooking fuel in the in the you know uh, medium of battery. <laughs> Around the same time, I was contacted by a company from another country. Um, that was proposing sponsoring me with lithium batteries for the boat. Um, that actually triggered me to be like, well, maybe I'll reach out to Dakota and just see, you know. My mama always said, you know, people can't say yes if you don't ask. So I went on their website and was looking around. I heard about Dakota through uh, Andy Shell of 59 North and the On the Wind podcast. And I knew that he was planning on converting all of his batteries to Dakota lithium. And so that was like, that was the um, sort of only endorsement I really needed. And uh, so I looked on their website and then I found that they had an application for ambassadors. And um, I filled everything out and uh, hit send, you know, and was like, okay, well, it's out there. We'll see how, how what happens. And um, I was very happy to hear back from them pretty quickly. And they, um, told me that they were interested in talking to me about doing a sponsorship and how we could work together. And uh, it went from there. <clears throat> and I was so happy to be able to partner with uh, an American company, being a US citizen myself, I'd much rather represent an American company than um, someone else. So I was super stoked that Dakota was um, willing to make Tritea and myself ambassadors for their brand. So then we started going back and forth, trying to figure out what exactly Tritea's power needs were, what they needed to be with the new um, introduction of induction cooking and convection oven, and um, what we needed to set up the system that would be right for Tritea. I was consulted through the whole process by Ryan Ellison of Ryan and Sophie Sailing a YouTube channel. Ryan is also one of the founding members of Dakota Lithium, so he knows everything there is to know about setting up batteries on a sailing yacht. Ryan and Sophie have a great video that breaks everything down, all the parts you need and what you need to consider um, to set up a lithium battery bank on your sailboat. Um, so I watched that and then, you know, Ryan explained all the different stuff. Uh, like one of the things I had no idea about was a DC to DC charger, which allows you to keep your AGM starter battery um, because my AGM starter battery is not that old. So I'm keeping an AGM battery and then the house bank will be lithium. Now, traditionally, you're not supposed to mix different chemistries, but with a B2B DC charger, um, DC to DC charger, that makes it so that you can use the alternator to charge both your AGM lead acid battery and your lithium bank without any problem for either one of the banks. So <clears throat> there was a lot of things that I did not have any idea about um, because I was, you know, I had not studied up on lithium whatsoever. So it's exciting to, to learn all the new aspects and then I'm going to be sharing with you guys what I learned and I'll definitely be sending you over to Ryan's video because it has everything you need to know in simple terms about, you know, setting up a lithium setup on your sailboat. So the pros and cons of lithium batteries. There's only actually one con 
when it comes to lithium iron phosphate batteries, and that is the cost. But the thing to know is it's a, just a large upfront cost. And once you break down the math on everything, it's not hard to see that the initial investment, which is quite a bit, is actually cheaper than having to buy multiple AGMs over the course of the um, one lithium's battery lifespan. For instance, this Dakota lithium battery and all Dakota lithium batteries come with an 11 year warranty. 11 years, they guarantee that this battery will work as long as it's installed correctly. Um, that's completely insane and tells you exactly how confident they are about the battery's lifespan. Um, <clears throat> where AGM batteries, if you're using them every day and cycling them up and down, you're lucky to get you know three or four years out of an AGM battery. So when you start adding up the cost of a quality AGM battery, you know, times four versus just buying a lithium battery, um, and then there's so many other factors that are positive about lithium, um, the, the initial investment starts to make sense if you can manage it. Let's talk about the pros of lithium. So the number one factor for me with lithium is the fact that a 200 amp hour battery is actually 200 amp hours that you have access to. Um, with an AGM battery, if you have a 200 amp hour AGM battery, you can only take that battery safely down to 50% without significantly lowering the lifespan of the battery. So you damage it every time you take it below 50%. So that means that your 200 amp hour AGM battery is actually only about 100 amp hours. And even then, I've, I've never brought my batteries down to 50%. Like if I get down even like 65%, I just shut everything down because I know how much it shortens the lifespan of these, these lead acid batteries. Um, so currently, Tritea has 200 amp hour batteries in the form of two group 27 100 amp hours each for each battery. The new house bank will be 400 amp hours. So we have two of these 200 amp hour Dakota lithium batteries. And um, that, that's a, so that's four times more energy access that I have that I, I did not have before. <clears throat> I'm gonna need that with the, you know, like induction cooking and then the convection oven that I'm installing. You can actually see my little convection oven guy sitting there, he's peeking in on us. Um, <clears throat> So when I install those, that's a high demand for energy. So I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need all that headroom. But so for me, that that's the, the the biggest benefit is the fact that you actually have access to all of this energy. Another thing is there's no drop curve. So if you have uh, lead acid batteries and you know as you're depleting your battery bank and it gets down. Let's say it gets down to like 70% or something, at least on, on my setup. It, if it gets down to 70%, you'll see the voltage drop from 12 volts down to like 10 volts. And what happens, a lot of times your lights get dim, they'll flicker. Some instruments can't even run at that low a voltage, so they'll just stop working and shut off. And um, so, and that's due to this power curve. With lithium, it maintains a stable power curve all the way down to almost zero, so that you have 12 volts throughout which is pretty fantastic. Uh, another wonderful aspect of lithium batteries, especially on a sailboat, is their weight. They weigh 60% less than their counterparts of lead acid batteries. And um, that's huge. That is a massive, massive thing. When we're trying to like trim weight as much as we can on boats, especially small boats, but any boat really. So the fact that they weigh so much less than lead acid is, um, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Another amazing thing about lithium batteries is they charge five times faster than AGM or lead acid batteries. That means that, you know, your solar is gonna top them up a lot quicker um, or your alternator, as long as you have all your, you know, you have a B and B set up and everything like that. Um, and that's, that's incredible, especially the solar thing. It's like, you know, that, that would come in really handy if you're in a place where there's like in, sometimes it's overcast or you don't you don't have, in the tropics it's no big deal we, we have sun all the time down here but <clears throat> I had someone write to me from uh, United Kingdom and was asking me about living on anchor full-time and you know I was telling him I was like well your biggest concern is going to be keeping your batteries topped up 
Um, now you don't, it's not good to run a diesel engine without it being under load to charge your batteries. <clears throat> You'd be better off getting a generator, but because what happens if you run your diesel engine and it's not under load, you're going to get carbon buildup. And the other thing that happens is if you're running your diesel engine at low RPMs, your alternator can overheat unless you have like a very expensive, like sophisticated, small, smart alternator. So, you know, really when it comes down to it, solar is your, your friend if you're in a place where that's an option. <clears throat> and to know that your solar setup is going to work five times better <laughs> because they're powering, you know, they're charging something that, that works five, to, that charges five times faster. Um, it's almost like a, like a double upgrade. Okay, and now let's circle back to the cost. It's all about money. It's always about money. Well, for, for most of us. Most of the people watching this channel, <laughs> anyway. It's always about money. It's difficult. Um, and it really boils down to how do you use your boat? Um, and how do you use your, how do you plan to use your boat in the future? So if you, let's say you only have access to be able to go sailing on the weekends, or you know on holidays or once a week um, or maybe uh, you can take a month off a year and go sailing so if that's if that's the usage of your boat it may not make sense for you to need to upgrade to lithium <clears throat> because I mean in the, it would you still have all the co the benefit of like not paying for lots of AGMs over a long period but if you're not taxing your AGMs and cycling them down all the time um, they might you might get a longer lifespan out of those AGMs than you would if you're living aboard. Now, if you're living aboard full time, and you're cruising full time, um, and you're not plugged into a dock keeping your batteries topped up at all times, and you're relying on solar, then lithium is a really great option for upgrading. Because I've had the same. I have my AGM house bank is four years old, and when I was in Los Angeles, I kept them topped up because I was plugged in the dock. Um, now here in Hawaii, I have not plugged into the shore power in since like this is uh, December right now. I have not plugged into the shore power since June. So it's just been solar or charging whenever I'm underway. Just in the last like two months, I have found that the batteries are not getting all the way topped up. And um, that is not something that had happened before. And it's I'm coming up on one year anniversary of living aboard full time. So especially since June, like it's been like a 24 hour day taxing on certain elements um, of draining the battery. <clears throat> now I have a pretty small draw on this boat. I've kept this boat very simple. The things that kind of run all the time um, or cycle on and off all the time is I have a refrigerator which is brand new, so it doesn't draw a lot. It's like um, an isotherm, I think it, it um, so it doesn't tax it a lot, but it does, you know, power up, power it on. Um, and then, you know, charging iPhones and uh, computers, camera batteries, all that stuff. Um, and I tend to just charge big stuff like my laptop in the daytime when the sun is up. But recently here in Hawaii, we had a big storm blow through and we didn't have sun for probably four days and my batteries got very low low enough that i was having to run the engine just sitting here at the dock um at kind of high rpms for about an hour every day just to make sure that it didn't drop too low so you know that's if i had already had the lithium installed this wouldn't have been a problem <clears throat> so that's you know it really boils down to if you're cruising full-time or if you're living on the boat full time, even in your local area, but you're not, you know, if maybe you're on a mooring ball or maybe, you know, you, you're just, you know, not on shore power, then lithium is a really good investment for you. And like I said, Dakota lithium has an 11 year warranty. So that tells you, you're not going to have to think about it for that long, which is unbelievable. In this day and age of things like lasting only a couple of years, uh, the idea that you could have something that you could rely on, <clears throat> and if there was by an off chance something went wrong with it, they they give you a guarantee for 11 years that they're going to take care of you, then um, that that's that's a good peace of mind when you're putting that kind of money into the investing into your boat's power.
And then another thing to know is like, if you are interested in converting your galley to electric, you can't run an electric galley off of AGM. Um, those like hot demand or high demand instruments like those or an electric kettle or anything, those things destroy AGM batteries kind of in short order. So you would, you know, even though it's going through an inverter and everything, they do not, like the chemistry of lead acid does not like high demand um, draw like that. So if you're interested in that, getting rid of like cooking fuel, <clears throat> which is pretty amazing, like you can really be off grid. If you have an electric galley and you happen to have a water maker, which I do not have a water maker yet, but at whatever point I finally get a water maker, I'm gonna be so, like so off grid it'll be amazing you can just especially if you're fishing it's like you can really extend your cruising into really wild places um with the uh electric galley lithium batteries and solar oh boy i am grateful that this thing is lighter than the agms that is so much easier to deal with So I want to thank Ryan and Dakota Lithium so much for believing in us and taking a chance on us. And um, I am excited to start this partnership with them and to outfit Tritea and bring her up into the future with, with lithium batteries and to show you guys us sailing in far flung places around the world, you know, using renewable energy from the sun, storing it in Dakota Lithium batteries and then cooking up some good food as well. So. Like I said, lots of project videos coming up in relation to this, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions whatsoever, hit me down in the comments and um, I'll answer them. And if I don't know the answers, I'll find the answers for you. Um, <clears throat> like I said, there's links to everything in the description of this video. And um, I look forward to showing you guys how this all works out. Head over to DakotaLithium.com and check out their full line of products. They've got batteries for every kind of application you can imagine. From sailboats to fishing boats, van life to off-grid living. Head over and check out everything they got. You can find my affiliate links in the description of this video. And as always, fair winds until next time.